What's going on everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona and today we are going to make a video specifically about things that just cost more money in Arizona so that you're not getting any surprises because people, some people think, oh I'm moving to Arizona so I'm going to be able to avoid a bunch of these expensive things. Well guess what? We're going to talk about that in this video, some things to keep in mind. If you're moving here or even if you live here, some of you are already going to be privy to it. So this comes in, form, in the form of a uh, influx of comments that I've gotten about auto uh, auto registration and so this one here in our group living in Arizona link below if you want to join and hang out with us guys like Jim Giles here who's posted this he's just sharing a uh, interesting comment he's saying just an FYI if you're moving to Arizona motor vehicle registration isn't cheap especially if the vehicles are less than five years old Here's the breakdown on mine. So he's got a 2018 Silverado in California. It's 871. Anytime you're competing with California on anything, that's a lot. And Arizona's not too far behind on that one, 801. It's actually cost him more to register his vehicle, uh, GMC Arcadia, Acadia 649 compared to California 520. Uh, 2017 fifth wheel, uh, a lot more expensive to register his vehicle. Uh, or 632 compared to 319 in California and uh, 2008 Honda MC it's more expensive in California so you could see on some of these he's paying a lot more to register his car in Arizona even than California so auto registration is something guys if you'd like really seriously join this group good information like this and we'd love to see you there okay over here now we also have another comment that came in from Jim Giles same guy but he's saying the same thing Jeff, you're doing a great job providing information. Just moved to Prescott two weeks ago and loving it. Wish ADOT MVD was kinder in on registration fees. Address the subject on the Facebook group. Oh, so now let's drill this down and get to the bottom of some of these costs, okay? So over here we have the cost of living in Arizona, which is basically what we're talking about, except we're going a little bit above and beyond. We're just talking about the most expensive stuff that you need to know. And so um, housing costs in Arizona you can see by rent where it stacks up, you know, Phoenix being the most expensive. So, uh, or well, the Phoenix Metro being the most expensive, Tucson being a lot cheaper. And then in Phoenix Metro, you can see Phoenix being the cheapest, whereas Scottsdale being the most expensive. Now, some of the things you have to keep in mind, utilities can cost you a lot more money. So we've already identified that auto registration at the M M V M V D can cost more. But we're also reviewing that Arizona is going to have higher utility bills primarily because of water and the electric. So keep that in mind. Now, in comparison to food, you're going to see a little bit of a difference too. And if we wanted to see directly where Arizona is going to stack up on that particular list, um, we have another uh, document here that we could pull up. But you could see, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, Phoenix area residents spend an average of 11% of their annual income on food compared to the U.S. average of 12.6 percent. So you're going to save a little bit on that, all right? Transportation, May 2019 from Gas Buddy places Arizona as the seventh worst state in terms of gas, okay? So depending on where you're going to get your information from, this is coming off of AAA. Gas prices, look at this. I mean, you could see Arizona right here sitting at, um, let's see here, we're right in the middle of the list actually, or towards the bottom. <laughs> right there, seventh to last, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, two ninety-five. Um, so you know, I don't know. It just seems like Arizona's kind of uh, the gas situation in Arizona could be a real pain in the butt. And combine that with the fact that you're going to be driving a lot because you're going to be on freeways. Uh, it just seems like transportation in Arizona is going to be expensive for you, especially if you have a car. So. Driving, getting registered, getting registered, and then what about the insurance? But as you can see, the gas prices are high. So this is kind of rearing its ugly head as transportation in Arizona can be a bit of a nightmare. That doesn't even include how crazy the, the roads are and the maintenance that you got to do on your car. So this is something to keep in mind when you're moving here. And if we wanted to know about car insurance, it is in the middle of the pack. I mean, it's not the it's it's at number 22 in terms of. Uh, expensive so the number 22nd uh most expensive insurance but still that's you know we're having to take all these things into consideration the registration the insurance the car maintenance the gasoline price it all adds up to you know 
does it offset the the median home cost? I mean, if you're saving money over here, but you're losing money over there, I mean, some things to keep in mind, right? And then you add in the utilities, but it's going to come down to management. Are you using uh, smart appliances that are energy efficient? Is your job within close proximity to your work? Or do you have to drive an hour to an hour and a half to get to work? So if you live in Queen Creek and you work in Peoria, that's not practical. If you live in Peoria and work in Peoria, you're going to be saving a lot more money. They're only going to get you on insurance or on insurance and registration. And those are just basically annual fees anyways. But the gas is where they'll really get you. And then you factor in the maintenance. Because think about it. It's really hard on your vehicle when it's so hot out. I mean, the radiator's got to work a little bit over time. The, the engine's got to work over time. It's hard on the tires. All that stuff, especially if you're doing off-roading a lot. Towing boats, some of you. I mean, things to keep in mind, right? And then so other things, there's more to it than just transportation, right? So let's take a look here. So how do we rank in terms of taxes? Are we, this is where they, this is where it's a little bit of a misnomer. So our, our uh, state tax is actually pretty low. So if you look at this, state tax 560, you know, that's, that's actually pretty fair. But where they end up making it up is on the, uh, average local tax rate. So that's where it gets a combined rate of 837. So we might have low sales tax and low state income tax, but when you combine them all and rank it up against the rest of the states, it's a little bit higher. So there are some secret things that they, uh, it's, it's kind of like you thought you were in good and then all of a sudden you found out it wasn't as good as you thought. You know, some states don't even have sale or income tax like Nevada. So, I mean, I'm not trying to push anyone out of moving to Arizona. I'm just saying that if you come in here thinking that things are going to be all hunky-dory and peachy keen, well, now you can see. Both of these both of these are fairly decent. Local tax rate, you know, for the sales tax and the state tax are pretty good rates. But when you combine them both, because you have to pay both, in this case, you know, every time you buy something, you get a sales tax. Every time you have to, uh, every time you have to, uh, pay your income tax, you got to pay. But when you combine them, there's the number 8.37. I mean, how, how does California rank on that? If you combine California, 8.56, just a little bit under the taxes in California for that. So there's other taxes that we have. Obviously we have a uh, property tax. So how does Arizona rank in terms of property tax? Well, let's go take a look at property tax. Where is property tax on here? I had it pulled up. So states with the lowest and highest taxes, well, let's see, lowest income tax, Arizona doesn't rank on that, or on the highest income tax, but like I said, it's the combined rate. So here's the property tax right here. Property tax is pretty decent. I mean, it's not terrible, but we're still taking into consideration some of the other taxes that we have to take, take a look at. Where is Arizona? There it is, number 13. So the property tax here is not too bad, all right? I mean, 0.72, it's, it's, in the top, it's in the top percentage of most favorable property taxes. So again, buying a home in Arizona is going to be a pretty good property tax or any sort of real estate in Arizona is gonna have a lower property tax. But you have to keep in mind, there are, they are gonna get you in other ways if they can't. If you mismanage your finances, that's why some people would say, get a financial advisor. Well, this is kind of, I mean, this isn't professional financial advice, but I mean, you're getting financial guidance here to say that if you're really looking to save money and be cost cost efficient, you're going to it's going to hit you in the the gas pumps. The gas pumps are going to hit you, and the automobile is going to hit you. So, living closer to your work is going to be who of you, especially if that's important in saving money, because we're talking a couple hundred, sometimes even five hundred dollars a month just in transportation. So. Remember that that's going to be your biggest, that's going to be the biggest area they can get you, the state or the, just the, the people who like to take your money, you know? And so if we really drill this down and take a look at the cost of living indicator on bestplaces.net over here, you have the USA, that's the U S national average. Here's Arizona and here's Phoenix in all of the categories, Phoenix or Arizona, Phoenix in particular is going to outpace the rest of the nation's average. Now that's not too, uh, that's not too big of a deal because, you know, a lot of people are leaving West Virginia and Pennsylvania and Michigan and 
some of these other states that are losing population. So obviously there is going to be a su supply and demand issue. But in, in terms of the top tier st states that are gaining population, you know, you have Washington, California, even after all it's gone through, Florida, Texas, um, um, you know, there's a couple other states that are really gaining po uh, population and the population boom is taking place. But Arizona is the cheapest out of those top tier states, okay, that are gaining population. But nationally, you can see Phoenix and Arizona rank really high. But where do they really uh, come in way above? Well, on transportation. That's the issue we talked about. Transportation is where we're way above the national average. Utilities, like I said, I mean, the electric is really where they're going to get you the most. Everything else is pretty uh, comparable. They're saying housing is a little bit high. Healthcare is really pretty good in Arizona. So uh, if we even come back over here to the cost of living indicator, according to the 2016 data from the Healthcare Cost Institute, healthcare prices in Phoenix metro area are 3% below the national median, while the Tucson metro area is much lower at a 14% difference. Additionally, Tucson and Phoenix metro area health prices, healthcare prices have risen 20%, 15% respectively since 2012. So it is getting more expensive here because more, more people are moving here and there's not enough healthcare providers to keep up. So supply and demand is inflating the price. The, this trend shifts if you look into total employees contribution for single healthcare coverage. In fact, a, 2000, a 2017 report from the Agency of Healthcare Research Quality shows Arizonans pay 1523 per enrolled employee at private companies. This is $108 higher than the national average. So it depends where you're getting your health care, too. I mean, here's one thing that I will say about anywhere, but in particular in Arizona, if you don't have health care and you have to pay cash for something, oh, wow. That will kick your butt. Cash, I mean, my grandma recently went to the hospital and they tried to say that she was there for five days and that she owed $100,000. Uh, so they're going to have to figure out what's going on with that. So uh, that that's just, yeah, obviously, you know, being an older person, you don't want to hear that. That happened here in Arizona. And then they misdiagnosed her too. So, I mean, I don't want to get too far into that just right now, but that's just a little bit of an idea into what I've seen personally. Back to that renewal thing with the uh, MVD or the uh, registration. If you really are worried about the MVD and the total cost of registration because you got a boat, you got a trailer, you got two cars, you got a bike, a whatever, maybe you have a lot of automobiles that you got to, or a lot of vehicles that you've got to um, register, ADOT, that's the name of it, Arizona Department of Transportation, right here, they have a section called Vehicle Services, so if you're commercial registration, whatever you're looking to do at the uh, MVD, Motor Vehicle Division, you can go on here, Vehicle Services, in the registration, they'll tell you all the questions you need to know, and there is an emissions test here in Arizona, so you got to pass emissions. If you have one of those cars that's barely getting along and you know it's a polluter, well, it's not going to pass emissions and that's going to cause you a headache because you're going to have to fix it. And they just make you do that. And there's a lot of people who, I, I as a kid, when I first got my first car, it didn't pass emissions, I don't think. Or I had to do something because my transmission, you know, when you're a young kid, you get, you get whatever you can get, right? And this was back in the 90s. So um, that was back before they had really fuel efficient cars. And I had a Cadillac, a 1989 Brome. And seemed like something was wrong with it. I, I remember just like waiting in line with no air conditioner because it was a 1989 Fleetwood Brougham that I got off my grandpa's friend and it was hot and I was trying to wait in line at the emissions and it was just moving so slow. I was like in line for two hours. I remember saying, I will never get a car that won't pass emissions ever again. So if you're in one of those shoes, oh man, the emissions situation back in the 90s was terrible. It might've improved, I, I don't know. So, um, yeah, there, there's basically the information. If you want to know about the how, how car insurance costs compare in Arizona, where you get the cheaper insurance, you can see uh, Phoenix is going to be more expensive than even El Mirage. Uh, and Avondale is going to be the most affordable for auto insurance by about $200 premium. So most expensive cities in terms of auto insurance. Least expensive cities, well, Lake Havasu City, Kingman, Bullhead City, Sierra Vista, and Safford, for those of you who are thinking about moving there, there you go. And hopefully, I think we've covered it all. The taxes, we can, we, we should really make a video specifically to taxes. If you want me to, let me know in the comments. And if there's enough demand for a video basically talking about taxes more in depth, we can. 
Anyways, guys, thanks to everyone who's been liking these videos and subscribing to Living in Arizona. Don't forget, join our group. It's below. And subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. We'll see you next time.